This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk. Players Club here in Castle under Lime for a brand new event. Live pool back on your screens here on Free Sports. It's the Vinny.co.uk Champions League. Steam Jameson and Simon Webb back with you once again on Monday nights. It's good to be back, Simon. It certainly is, yeah. We've only been away for four or five weeks, but it's felt like a lot longer. And yeah, no, it's great to be back, and I can't wait to, to see this event get underway. Yeah, and what an event to return with as well. It's it's new, it's different, it should be fantastic in so many unique ways. Try and set this up for us. Why should we be excited? Well, to be honest, this could be the start of a new era for Paul. It, it, it really could be. This is uh, a sort of a step forward. The, 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 the shootouts that we've been bringing you over the last 18 months or so, the guys behind that, OMG, they've merged with a guy called Lee Kendall to form um, Ultimate Paul. Um, and this is the first event that they're bringing us and it is going to be the start of, of some big things in the Paul world. Yeah, we, t we talk about big things. We've got some big players there. You saw in the title sequence uh, a handful of some of the best players to to pick up a cue, some of them. Yeah, we've got three or four of the greatest players in the history of the game playing in this event. Some of the players that here on Free Sports we may not have seen because we've been focusing on the players, but yeah, there are some absolutely world-class players playing in this event. Big money too, 10K for the winner, which is taken from sponsorship money, not player entry as well, which is, again, something that's a little bit new and a little bit different. Yeah, very exciting. That's one of the things I think I'm most excited about is that too often we've seen in the poor world that to, great, to get good prize pots then the players have to pay, pay high entry fees. That's not the case here. This is an invitational event with a sponsored prize pot which is absolutely massive. And it's going to work like this. We've got eight groups of four. We'll play one group a week and then the winner of each group will head into the quarter-finals. These are the rules, international eight-ball rules we're calling these. Me and Simon are still getting used to them ourselves, don't you worry about that. We'll guide you through them as we go, but essentially, if you've been watching us in the black ball shootout rules, not too much has changed. The foul introduces cue ball in hand, and you can play from wherever you like, and the frame just continues. That, for me, is the, is the biggest difference. Si, what about for you? Yeah, there's a few fundamental differences. There's, there's no longer is there two shots or a free shot and a visit. It's uh, if your opponent fouls, you just get to uh, cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. Uh, I think one of the big things to watch out for is that uh, you will only ever play your color set. You cannot, you can no longer play um, a free shot as in pot yours and pot your opponent's um, or play your opponent's ball. Of course, you can still play a skill shot, which is um, really important. But if you don't make the skill shot, then it is just loss of turn and it isn't a foul, which is going to be a big change, I think, tactically. And don't worry, we've kept the golden break and the golden duck. You can win and lose a frame in one fell swoop of the queue. Pop the black of the break, you win it. Pop the black and the white and you lose it. It really is all to play for, Sai. I absolutely cannot wait for this. Four really good players as well for our first week. The, uh, the first matchup is right in front of you there. The two players scarcely look like they can first wait. <laughs> so, uh, so let's Martin get underway, Baker. shall we? It's uh, Martin McIntosh against Rob Wall. This is Martin taking to the table now. The uh, Scotland captain, which yeah, he is very, very proud to be. We've seen him a few times on Free Sports in recent months. And that is the worst possible start for Mad Mac. He'll turn the table over to Rob Does right the from the get-go. Yeah, first opportunity to talk about the rules as well. This is a slight change to the rules that we've seen on free sports over the last couple of years. Uh, a foul off the break is going to give Rob cue ball in hand anywhere behind the break line, but he does not have a second visit. It is just one shot. Immediately yellows going after yellows and potting the yellow there. That means that yellows are now in play. Pretty good open split actually for his first opportunity. Just what you want from the beginning of a, a match in a new tournament. 
Although well, he won't be pleased with that positional shot. I think he can still get through to the yellow over the bottom left, so he's still in the, in the visit. And you'll notice as well, the arena looking resplendent here in uh, Newcastle under Lyme. It's a really beautiful setup here at the at the Players Club, so graciously hosted by Lee Kendall and Gas Potts, the owners. Really top venue for all Q Sports here. There's well, there's a thousand tables of all the different <laughs> Q sports in this in this building, and uh, what's nice, of course, is a l sort of lesser mentioned thing is all the players get their own practice table to warm up on, so they can remain distant. They can really work on their on their game in between matches because they will have three to play tonight. Everyone plays each other, which is it's going to be fast and frenetic. Twenty minute matches, twenty second shot clock. Everyone plays each other. Winner takes all, and it's going to be really, really interesting to see how the first week goes. Just to let you know how the group standings will work, a win will secure you two points, a draw just the one, a loss zero. Frame. And the first frame of the Champions League goes to Rob Warren. What a start for Rob, that was brilliant. His first taste of shootout pole, and he uh, starts with a reverse dish, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, about all we can do there. Perfectly done. And this is exactly what I was just saying with the match format. A race to four frames, so we are on a 20 minute match timer. But if you get four on the boards, it's game done and dusted. You can take a, an early shower. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the format of the, the matches is pretty much what we've seen in the shootout over the last uh, 18 months or so. Uh, I guess the big difference really being the fact that we've got group stages, so you're going to have to sort of keep an eye on that. And um, yeah, every minute's really going to count out there. Well, that was always the tagline, wasn't it? Every second, second frame, Rob wants to break. For sure. Leading one frame to nil. That Time couldn't running. be more true in this format. Just 20 minute matches, so you really don't have much time to make it count and well it's interesting we ask each player for their nickname within the pool world and it's Rob Wacker Warren and with a break like that you can see why yeah it gives it a whack doesn't he that's a uh, decent uh, def decent enough break especially coming off a reverse dish in the previous frame you see the shot clock just play. getting into the final five seconds no excuses for the players not to notice that. The, the arena will tell them very quickly. Notice when he was practicing, actually, outside. He really does play aggressively, does Rob. He's a bit of a see it and hit it sort of player. Lovely cue action. Plays aggressive. Yeah, he, he does. Um, but I think... I think all the players want to, and I think these rule sets, we've talked about this, the, the new rules, and um, it's going to be fascinating to see how they play out in this event, but I think these could well be considered the most attacking rule sets uh, around, and um, well, well, we'll find out over the next uh, 11 weeks or so. Well, we talked about this a little bit, didn't we, off-air in our in the quite often chats that we have away from the table and the commentary box, Simon. We, we sort of talked about black ball rules being a really, a really aggressive form of the game. With these international eight ball rules though, I almost think they're probably the most aggressive form because you could still, there was still that element of taking a pocket within black ball rules and you'd have to play a really good skill shot to get out of it. It's now easier to take that away. You know, you don't have to necessarily pot a ball to pot an opponent's, you just turn the table over. So for example, if Rob was to have a red over the pocket here, or a yellow, rather, of Martins over the pocket. He could remove that, quite simply, by playing his red and making sure of the white part of the yellow, and that would be a totally legal shot. It's, uh, it really does open the table up quite a bit. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, we're going to... I think we'll, well, we'll find out. We'll see how the, the players adapt to it. I think that the one thing, I think, for players that people have who've been involved in the pool and, and keeping up to date with what's going on in the pool world Chip will know these rules under a different uh, name. They've been played for a few years now um, under the, the name Supreme Rules. Um, we've got a, a name change for this event. Um, but also, the, the other thing with these rules, they're, they're closely aligned to what's played in, in China and what's played in America. Um, so there's some real benefits to, to go into this rule set as well. It's also the rule set that's most commonly played by 
amateur players such as myself on mini clip, for example. Yeah, which I, is which is where I feel that like I can really play to my strengths as a pool player. Yeah, absolutely. I think well, uh, so, so don't I'm, agree too much, yeah. right? <laughs> so I'm told that the, uh, the the game. I've not played it myself, but I've been told they're very similar rules. Uh, so anyone that's played that will know these very well. Uh, Martin's not quite got the position he wanted, although he has opened up the yellow here. But I think he could just sneak through to the yellow at the middle of the table. I think he's got the potting angle. Yeah, it's nicely played. A rather a rather more demure Martin McIntosh than we've been used to seeing. Usually, the uh, the Ian Poulter of the pool world is uh, Martin with his uh, display of hosiery. But uh, this is relatively laid back by his standards. Well, I, I don't think it's by his doing, actually. I think uh, there's a, a new, as we're into a new era of Paul, there's a new dress code out there as well. I think it's, uh, there'll be some personality shown um, with their cl clothes choice, but I think it is going to be darker trousers or more plain trousers. So, um, yeah, it's uh, not what Martin wanted, but he'll be, ha he'll be happy with the clearance, that's for sure. He's on the board. Yeah, he certainly will be happy with that. And it's, it's one thing that we've noticed, really, with, with Martin in the numerous times we've seen him play in, in shootout pool in, in recent months is he, he has got the ability to look phenomenally talented in individual moments but just doesn't quite always have that consistency yeah I think uh, Martin's a he's a, a really good lad and he's a he's a top player he's a great potter he controls the white well around the table but he gets a little bit lost with his patterns at times and it's something he's worked hard to try and improve and he's from when I first saw him play two years ago to, to now he's he's definitely improved dramatically as a ball player um, but he keeps putting himself out there against great players uh, and he's learning every time he plays so we're going to continue to see that improvement with him yeah I think there's scarcely a more game individual on the pool circuit than Martin McIntosh he really is come one come all he will give you a go absolutely although one thing we haven't mentioned yet with Martin and it, we, we, we probably should is the fact that he's turned up today without a queue um, he went to the to the club that he practiced at to, to grab his queue uh, brought the case down without checking when he got here opened his case and there was no queue inside so somebody Who, is who's who's queues he using sir well, he's actually uh, he's actually having to use mine um, well it's, it's nice to, to get, for it to get out and have a bit of an airing as I've not touched it for a couple of years uh, first time it's been on TV in a little while <laughs> it's definitely the first time it's been on telly for a while um, it, it had half a tip on it as well so I said you're more than welcome to borrow my queue but you might want to retip it so uh, rather than having any practice he spent his time this afternoon re-tipping re, uh, the queue is it a bit like seeing your ex with another partner <laughs> well it's just nice to see somebody uh, using it uh, like they should <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done pretty well so far as Mad Mac he's handed the table over here to Rob though with a bit of work to do I tell you what what a recovery that is Absolutely. You'll be able to tell me, Simon, how intentional was this? This was, if deliberate, unbelievably good. No, he. I mean, there's no way he's, he's tried to play that. He's just, you saw a raise of the hand there. He's just tried, that was his big target, hit the red at the top of the table and, and hope not to leave an op easy opportunity. The fact it's gone in, brilliant for him because it's given him a great chance. The two reds at the bottom of the table, the one near the two yellows does go to the bottom left. The one that's going to be a big problem is the one just above the black. Uh, it goes to the left centre, but it's not easy to get onto it in the left centre. He may just be looking to drop this in, rest the white on the yellow and, and accept a slightly awkward pot into the centre. No off the jaw there, it was quite handy. Well, this is thin, but the, the pot's not too bad, but the white's going into the black. He's going to have to control the, the cannon on the black. Um, the black's going to go more towards the side cushion than the pocket, so he has to control the, the cannon. Yeah, it's not, not worked out at all. But he has a shot. Not easy, though. Oh, he's unlucky. He's unlucky. That's a good go. It goes without saying that these have to go for Martin McIntosh. And that's not easy to do when you look at the yellows at the bottom of the table. Black's blocking the bottom right-hand corner. Tough pot in the middle to start with as well. Okay, he's missed the pot, but he does have the snooker. And if he can't get 
between the two yellows on the right-hand side by that centre pocket, then this might be slightly harder. I'm not sure the one cushion off the left-hand side's on either. This is tight and awkward. Oh, oh I do not believe that's not dropped. And neither can Rob Warren. Healer's just been thinking any contact and I'm home and hosed. Uh, it's impossible to hit this and not bot it. Well, uh, that's what I thought. Look at that. That's, that's incredible. And what's worse, he's actually, those yellows at the bottom that were awkward, he's left at Martin an angle now where he can open these up. Yeah, that one in the centre. Easy to play on the other one that he's nearest to in a shot or two's time. He'll take the one in the centre pocket now. It's delicate, but you'd expect him to make it. Guaranteed position. No problems for Martin. This will annoy Rob. That was a good opportunity to win the frame. He's not taken and Martin's frame. punished him. It's a strange old game this at times, isn't it? That is absolutely remarkable. Just looks like it was begging just to be pushed into the pocket. But it, it didn't drop, and I mean, that can happen. I mean, we were having actually a little knockout on the on the tournament table a little bit earlier, Simon. It plays absolutely beautifully, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a brand new table. It's a Supreme Pool table that's been released. It's a brand new style from them. I believe it's called The Match. Um, so it is a, a brand new uh, everything, really. Um, brand new cloth on there as well, which is playing beautifully. It's really nice and quick, but it's also very responsive. And I think the players are going to really enjoy it out there. Yeah, absolutely. And for Martin McIntosh there, 2 1 up. This, is, this could, be a, could be a great start for Martin here. He's, as we mentioned, consistency can be his issue, but in such a short format, we used to see him in short formats, but it doesn't get much shorter than this. He, actually, a player like Martin might find his home in this tournament because it may only require those sort of bursts that he's so good at just to walk away from games. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean,. These groups are going to be tough to call all the way through, but looking at the group today, Martin will start as the outsider. At, at, that's how the bookies have seen it um, on paper. But the one thing Martin has going for him, he's played in a, in a number of shootouts. Um, OK, we've seen Jimmy Croxton on the screens in a shootout before, and he played a 4-1 a, uh, a month or so ago. Um, and, we, and Josh Kane played one shootout event, uh, but this is Rob Warren's first, first go in a shootout, so he's going to have to get used to the sort of pace of play. Uh, so Martin's definitely a chance today. It's, it, it is an even group. Oh, it's a bad miss from Martin because those reds have really opened up. The one on the right-hand side cushion that went to the top right, and um, yeah, I, I fancied him to to clear up here. You could see he's played that with an awful lot of right-hand side because he wanted to play the cannon onto the red to hold for position. And, and that's where not having his own cue is going to really hurt him because he's just not going to get... He's got no time to work out how much he's going to throw. Um, he's going to have no feel for that cue or that tip at all. Um, so any time he has to play a shot like that, it's going to really hurt him. And speaking of good positional shots, how about this from Rob Warren? Perfectly played to break out those two yellows. Reasonable chance of the clearance here for Rob. Excellent pot to the corner. That was probably the key there for him because that was the hardest pot he's going to have left. Um, the, I guess the difficulty now left is, is the one on the left-hand side to the left middle. That will go off the red nicely, uh, but he's going to have to play it um, with some sides to try and get across for the last yellow look for him to play this one off the red rather than direct oh, he has gone direct and he's well he's accepted distance on this last yellow he is such a beautiful striker of a cue hey, beautifully cued in frame 2-2 oh, 7 and a bit minutes to go 
moment, Rob Warren squares it up. It's a brilliant clearance. Yeah, well done there from Rob. That was pretty, uh, made that look a lot easier than it really was. Had to do uh, a couple of really good position shots early in the visit. Made them look simple and uh, yeah, cleared, cleared them up nice and cleanly. Have a look at the uh, international eight ball rules. There's going to be, we sort of, this graphic gives you the key points. Um, but we will be trying to keep you up to date as we go through the, the groups whenever we, you know a new rule comes up or whether there's anything that uh, we need to mention. But we're, we're learning the rules ourselves, though. It's, uh, yeah, absolutely. In all these years of, of just watching and commentating on black ball rules, we, we have to ourselves change our habits. And as I said, we, we had a bit of a knock around the tournament table Game earlier. We were trying to learn the uh, these international rules. And time I think what pleasantly surprised me, just personally speaking, was how little we had to think about it. They didn't really come into play all that much, you know? Yeah, it's, I think, to anyone that's not used to, or hasn't, you know, hasn't got used to a different rule set, I think these will be the most simple to understand. Um, you only ever play your colour set. Um, and it, it is, I think, it will be fairly simple for people to pick up. Those that have been playing it and are used to a different uh, different rule set whether that's black ball rules or world rules it, it may take a, a little bit of getting used to the, the tactical side of the games the way you might play a shot slightly differently uh, on the tactical side but when you're clearing up the balls it's still the same you've still got you know you've still got to clear up you've still got to work your patterns out and you've still got to control the white around the table Martin gave the table a, a Scottish snarl at the end of that last break that came up dry unhappy that he was denied a ball down. And Rob here with a chance to seize the initiative in this one. That's a lovely little kiss. I thought he'd knock that yellow safe for a moment, but that's come out, well, it's come out nicer than it could have. Yeah, I, for a minute, I thought that was going to go really safe. It, it's still awkward enough that he has to hit a gap of the table to, to land on it, uh, and he can't do it off this next shot. And the longer he leaves it before getting on that ball, the harder it's going to become. He hasn't come far enough down the table this time. Don't think this yellow goes in the centre pocket. That's yeah, a tough shot, this. He's taking it up the table, so taking the pocket, I think he was probably not really giving that much hope of trying to pot it. This is where you might see something interesting. If Martin, for example... ...wanted to clear that pocket... He could do so without potting one of his reds, as long as he plays his red first. You'd go into that yellow and clear the pocket away. But it's interesting in the, the brief conversation we had with Martin when he arrived at the venue, he fully admitted that he wasn't too au fait with the rules. He, he said he's a simple man, he, he comes and pots balls, which is a pretty good attitude to have. But I think the, that is one thing we will see over the course of this tournament. Those who are very used to playing this rule set will have a minor advantage to, to those who aren't used to it. I, I think so, and, and in this group in particular, Martins, you know, openly would admit that he doesn't really know this rule set yet. Um, but Rob, uh, Jimmy, and Josh have all played in multiple tournaments with this rule set. As I said, it's been around for a couple of years, and they've all played in. Um, Supreme Series events which were held in this venue um, and especially with, with Rob and, and Jimmy they've, they've had success in this rule set as well so um, they definitely have an advantage Yeah, it's a good time to mention actually the other two players in this quadruple man group Josh Kane and Jimmy Croxton two very, very, very able Q artists that's it so Actually, a pretty handy shot that for Martin, Martin McIntosh. He clears away the pocket. You can see there the, the, slight, the slight grimace from him. I think instantly his first thought is foul. But no, that's a legal shot. Has yep. the table over. And actually gives himself an advantage. That's our first look at that happening. Um, OK, he wasn't trying to do it on that occasion, but he's put his red onto the yellow and the yellow's gone in. That is not a foul in this rule set. That is just uh, loss of turn. So... Rob Warren comes to the table and he plays from where the white finish is and that's it. There's nothing else to, to talk about with that. So um, Martin probably walked away thinking he'd fouled, but <laughs> not the case. Uh, hasn't played a great second uh, safety shot, though, so the good chance here for Rob. Yeah, he, he almost fluked a brilliant shot and then didn't quite actually back that up. 
And Robbers sees the advantage hit. Right smile from Martin. Not Great. what he wanted. 3 2 to Rob Warren. Just under three minutes remaining. It's by no means a decisive lead. A reminder we will take the score at 20 minutes, regardless. A chance still for Martin McIntosh here to square things up. With it being 3 2, it means it is Rob's break next, and a chance for him to win the match. Race to four. He gets to four ahead of the clock striking zero. He goes and takes the two points regardless. And this is where Rob's inexperience in shootout rules may hurt him because uh, he's not used to having this sort of match situation, the match Frame block where um, you need to sometimes be Rob a little bit cagey break. with how you play. Three frames um, to two. It's to his Ten advantage minutes. for these balls not to really open up. Uh, the worst thing he could do is break dry and break big. Or by hook or by crook, it's a... Uh, Pretty poor break, but he has made a ball as well, which is almost the, <laughs> the dream scenario for Rob there. But it's still a long, long way to go because we see this quite a lot. Three minutes in with a 20-second shot clock is actually a, f a lot, lot of time. Absolutely. There's, uh, there is time. Martin doesn't have to rush it in terms of um, looking for a finish. He can wait for the right opportunity if he wants to. So that's still open table here, even though Rob made a ball off the break, hasn't made a ball with his visit, so it's open table for Martin. Reds or yellows. His choice is reds. Red balls in play. You can hear from our referee, Viv Resco. Back from the Moscone Cup. Only does the big events, Viv. Only does the big events. Fantastic to see her out there as well. See, a little frustrated there. He just wanted to flick that red on the way by because that red doesn't go past the yellow. A little flick on it would have opened it up, and the rest of the reds are open. So he's going to have to go back to work. Oh, that looks a little wide to me. Yeah, that is a, a chance wasted. 90 seconds then for Rob Warren with which to work. And as you mentioned, shootout experience could be key. Advice here to Rob from shootout experts, myself and Simon, will be to pot the easy balls and chew as much clock as you can. Yeah, pot one or two, try and uh, maybe take a pocket or two of your own, stop your opponent from having a, an easy opportunity. There we go, that's just nudged over the pocket, no interest in potting that one. Martin does have a pot in the centre, but he's got nothing else afterwards. He's got a minute with which to work, very much still in play here for Martin McIntosh. So this is where Martin probably should float the red down on top of the yellow and try and get the white to the bottom cushion. There we go. So he has, he said he hasn't been looking at the rules, but he's obviously definitely uh, given it some thought. 41 seconds, yeah, don't sit down, Martin, every second counts. So that's just to reiterate, that is not a foul, that is just loss of turn. And that's where we're going to see the differences in the tactical play. Oh, well, that could also be... A canny shot. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that time it's better for Rob for that not to go in because he's really blocked that red off at the top of the table. And Martin is is done here. Well, that's oh, oh if he had ten, oh, he was ten or fifteen seconds short. First game is done and dusted. Rob Warren takes the win. Win for Wacker to open things up here in the Vinnie Notcutter UK Back Champions League. A great start for Rob and just about shed in the end, but it just shows there's not a lot between our two players, Simon. No, both players were very competitive there and it's going to be very tight all the way through tonight. Yeah, our first win is underway, which means match number two of six is coming up when we come back.